So you may have remembered we did a video on Wes Watson, the maniac who thinks he is a guru coach and makes a ton of money. And sure, he might make money, but at what cost? I think this guy is an absolute buffoon. And all of you shared that same experience and talked about sort of almost like Greg Doucette, how before when he had to actually become an ex-con and started posting videos that were actually helpful and insightful, he was a good person. And now he's transitioned into this radical maniacal, insane individual. But Wes, I've been dieting for like three months. Shut the fuck up. You've been doing it a year? Shut the fuck up. I'll wait till everything's perfect and then I'll start posting. Or motherfucker, fuck you, shut up. And just likes to tout about his money to make more money because we all arguably know the richest people in the world don't go around screaming that they make enough money to ruin your life. That is just something, quite frankly, an insecure child does on their spare time in any kind of virtual situation where essentially they, they get to stand on a little bit of a pedestal. In the gym, you see it with the guy who's biggest he'll always look around and do this snarky face at people or even look be loud as shit in the gym because they feel as if they have the biggest presence we see this everywhere any any industry any place where the man has more accolades to even the smallest extent he's going to represent that somehow in that industry here we get to see it with Wes Watson and I thought today we would do a little bit of a different video we would go through and kind of talk about well who it is West and why is it important to cover up uh, just make fun of him that's really what we're trying trying to do today. Now, to briefly explain, if you don't know, Wes Watson is a character online who is rather extreme. He does some crazy things in attempts to garner some sort of subscribership in terms of his coaching program. Now, he both coaches people through a fitness aspect as well as a business aspect. He is a entrepreneur who basically sells you a program on how to get rich, as he is rich. How did he get rich himself? Well, that's actually not very clear. He was in prison, he's an ex-con, and he lied a lot about about his previous story being an ex-con which we covered in my video which you should go watch that really talks about that in length him lying about his ex-con status and a lot of people calling him out there's actually a youtube channel dedicated to calling him out which i think is awesome but i wanted to just go through and talk about his tomfoolery and show you a little bit more of his character because i think it's absolutely hilarious let's just look at today's stories holy shit monday's message fuck you guys i've said it before and as I'm driving to the gym in arguably one of the fittest places on earth, which is Miami, I still fucking see it. And it's just... Uh, it. Miami is not the fittest place on earth. It is fucking far, far from it. Oh my god. It is where you go to see fat zombies everywhere. Uh, you can find a bump of cocaine on just a random table at a restaurant if you want. Or maybe a couple, you know, $5 hookers out there. But there's not much else besides that. Do they have gyms? Yes. Is there fit people? Sure. But if you want to be the most fit place in the world, try going to an Asian country and expanding your view rest. There is way more fit people than you and just because you take a copious amounts of steroids you have anger issues your blood pressure is high and you've lost all your hair due to an excessive uh inbound intake of dht doesn't make you fit sorry buddy insanity if do you realize that the most common motherfucker on this planet is a consistent man with no fucking results i'm watching all these people just run up and down the causeway by my house the fucking Venetian bridge right there. And all of them are just is still in horrible shape. It doesn't take that long. Like, if you've been chasing... And yet, all of them are probably more happy than you, bro. Just being honest. All of them are probably more happy than you because they're running. Their metabolic health is certainly healthier because they're not taking, again, copious amounts of steroids, grams of steroids. Their uh, blood work probably looks better. They're going to live longer, for sure. And they probably have a family to come home to. You know, like a, a, a wife, kids, uh, people that actually matter in their lives and don't just chronically hate them because of the content they produce. Food for thought. A physical goal for more than fucking six months and you don't look drastically different unless you were a motherfucking obese slob you're fucking tripping this goes for anything you've been chasing i don't give a fuck 
financial whatever and just to to face this point more do you think that it's everybody's goal to be like lean and muscular because it's not like it's very far from it i have lost opportunities with women because i'm overly muscular or too lean so west i don't know what the fuck you're talking about also i would much rather be in the other guy's position than here's here's what i depict you right i wish i had like an animator who could animate this because it would be hilarious but i think of you know west with his rent bill in his hand that's like a hundred thousand dollars because he doesn't believe in buying homes for some reason and he's looking out his window watching the sky run by with a smile on his face happy as ever in the morning and he's sitting there drinking a monster energy because i feel like this is he doesn't drink coffee probably drinks monster energy let's be honest and he's reading this bill and he's looking out at this this person running by with no care in the world and he's just thinking god damn it i hate that guy i fucking hate him i hate this motherfucker so much as his blood pressure you know slowly slowly increases coming to like a boil point of a t-bot and he's just sitting there just like oh my fucking god Oh my god, oh my god. That's Wes Watson. Can't play no game with these niggas. Huh. Can't play no games with these niggas. Come on. No one is doing push-ups for workouts. Like, I was in the military, bro. Not, not an ex-convict. So my morality stands quite a bit fucking higher than yours, Wes Watson. I was in the military for eight, eight years. We all know push-ups are worthless. They do nothing for you. They do nothing for you. It's just a meaningless test that we have to do. And it's actually why they're phasing it or have phased it out of the fitness test in the military. It's gone now. We do a different thing. We do push-up. You extend your arms. It's a combat fitness test. Completely different. It does virtually nothing for you. How do we get fit in the military when we're on, you know, overseas operations? You lift fucking weights. You run a lot compared to the guy that you were just talking shit about you run a lot and uh while you might not physically appreciate the appearance of a military soldier who runs a lot because he's not shredded and jacked because he's not on copious amounts of androgens it's likely that he can still do copious amounts more work than you buddy Okay, can we also talk about like i'm a big tattoo guy right like obviously i get some of the best work all around the world like that is one of my favorite things to do to go i guess you'd say like tattoo tourism where like i'll go to thailand and get a tattoo from there I'll go to korea japan i'll go to fucking bosnia and get a tattoo i'll go to an expo that has a tattoo artist from hong kong and get a tattoo i virtually never get a tattoo from anyone local unless they're a very close friend and like i have a very good reason to be sitting around with them for eight to ten hours to get a tattoo tattoo done i love tattoos i love really good artwork like super good artwork but the tattoos that this man has look like they've been drawn by a fent zombie himself in miami 33 million people in 30 days you guys do you understand how massive this is it'll be 50 million in 30 days but not only that think about this clients of mine like superhuman fathers we're making over a hundred grand a month with only having 1500 followers. You don't have to have a crazy amount of followers, but if you do and you built them from the quality habits and you built them from all these things that matter, you have a lot of money sitting on the table because you made a lot of impact. All you guys out there who have Hold on. 30... <laughs> Get, do you guys see what I'm seeing? Look at the fucking suitcases in the background. Like the tri-fold suitcases, like the three stack in a pyramid on this just random table in the middle of his house. That is the kind of ego we're working with here. And he's now going to promote himself because his presence on a podcast blew it up which sure you might have you know gotten someone exposure but i think what people forget to realize with podcasts is it's about how well you can repeatedly get good guests and how good the interviewing process is sure you get 28k in one video that might actually like literally from a statistical standpoint about 60,000 views per one video gets you maybe six to ten subscribers that's it that's all it gets you that's all it nets you just to show you how hard it is to actually gain subscribers so paying whatever he's asking, probably an obscene amount of money to talk no knowledge, to talk no game planning, to talk nothing that's actually useful for someone in a position of poverty going into well. He's he's charging them a copious amount of money and then they're just getting maybe six to seven subscribers. Like, come on, let's be honest here. Is that really worth it? You guys ask why, why, why do you need this? Why do you need that? Why is this? Why is that? You should ask how, because it doesn't matter. If you don't want the same shit another motherfucker has, 
Richie chains and Bugattis. I'll tell you why. I don't even need to know why. He he likes the chains, the, the matching watch, the, the matching phone case, for Christ's sakes. There's a reason why. It's funny how he has the phone out because he has to show like the case is matching. That's how big his ego is. But there's a reason that he wants these things. And it's called attention. That is it. That is the only premise behind what he is doing. Attention. Now, if we look past this and ask why other people are asking why he wants these things coming from their own position, it's likely because they don't have these things and they're finding pure joy and asking why you would want a car that's more than most people's household, then yeah, it's a pretty fair point because they likely have children. They likely have other responsibilities in life that are much more meaningful and fulfilling. And because Wes doesn't have any kind of passion or fulfillment in what he's doing or fulfillment in his life, like a, a wife, kids, he service to his country and not scamming people and actually providing fulfillment in other people's lives, which being selfless is one of the best ways to find fulfillment in life in any capacity. He's got to fulfill that void with things, tons and tons of things. I can tell you right now, I have the exact plan of what I would do once I cross 2 million revenue a year is I would like to buy, this is as simple as it gets. I would like to buy a fucking truck. I had a Toyota Tacoma, the brand new model. I had the, um, oh my God, the Trailhawk edition. One of my favorite trucks ever. Like I loved it, but it still pales in comparison to a truck I had when I was in high school. It was a 1993 Ford F-150. That was my favorite truck. It was a single cab pickup, a stick shift, beautiful piece of machinery. Loved that thing. It wasn't even an eight cylinder engine. It was a six cylinder engine. My goal is when I have that kind of disposable income is to just find another one and then literally just restore it to modern era conditioning and use that bitch as my daily driver. That's it. That's all I want. I, I, I don't even want a big house. Like I ideally just want a two bedroom to three bedroom house because I feel like super anxious when I have a bigger house than that. I've had a four bedroom house that I bought and sold because it was miserable to have four bedrooms in that big of a house and to live in it alone. You feel like an absolute douchebag for taking up that much space just for yourself. And then even worse, you get home and you hear the echoes of your own home. It's like, ugh, it's a weird dystopian feeling no one likes. So uh, anyways. I found my head. I bow my head and pray to God while I'm putting a fucking 3cc syringe in my ass full of testosterone and equipoise. That is what this is telling me. Elite team, otherwise known as I've got this guy on gear, so he's starting to look really good. Oh, I was just at the gym and it was packed, but it was just a great reminder. I looked around in a packed gym. Let me just guess. He's going to say everyone was inadequate. Everyone was completely not doing anything that they should be doing. I just sat back for a second and I thought this. That every gym in America is packed like that right now. And every gym across the world is packed like that right now. And I beat every single person at filming your goddamn workouts and making a shitload of money online while helping motherfuckers. I beat every single motherfucker. Okay, so it's somewhere along the lines of, hey, I'm making more money than you, or hey, I'm better than you. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you really are. That's why you have to tell everybody every day, all the time. In another car, showing the dashboard. I love how he also records while he's driving. I mean, I'm, we're not even through the day's stories yet, guys. This is how crazy this shit gets. This is him driving and recording another story for the umpteenth billion time. What does this man do with his time? I run a business, two of them. I don't have any time. I don't have any time. I have time to record a video in the day. I have time to do check-ins with clients, to talk to clients, to help them with their shows. I have time to manage other assets. That's it. And then I literally, once I'm done working, I have about 30 minutes before I go to bed. I don't have time to post stories. I don't have time to text friends. I don't have time to go hang out to go drive around in my car to take a video of my fucking dashboard i don't have time to do any of that and yet this guy is so busy and better than everybody else and i'm sure you can relate if you work a job where it has you working overtime when do you have time to post stories constantly throughout your day like this it's just logical to think that this man has actually nothing to do and he's just robbing people of money by literally talking down to them another man who does not know you Another man that you watch online upset does not know who you are. And you write him talking all that, I'm gonna come beat your ass, pussy, fucking bitch. And then you're like, and then the guy's like, okay, yeah, just don't talk so much. Don't waste your breath. Here's the address. Just roll up when you're ready. Like, cruise anytime. Like, I'm just not scared at all. Like, just roll through. I doubt he sends like, anyone his address. I highly, highly doubt it. Highly doubt it. No, you come to me. I'm like, oh, God, bro, come on, you wrote me. Like, you were saying how you're going to whoop my kind of chili out, so we're going to have to hit the spa right now. What the fuck? It's actually pretty cold. Ooh. 
I'm really not talking shit when I post the why can't we be friends. I mean, I want... So you guys, does... He really does think that his life is the shit. I just imagine being around this guy is one of the most toxic experiences that you could ever have as a human being. He reminds me of the guy that you go to the bar with, and then he just starts recording everything and talking like a belligerent asshole. And everyone's like, dude, who invited this guy? Like, why is he even here? But in his center of the universe, he thinks that he's the absolute shit and everyone's here to be with him and not the other way around. Going in the spa count as a shower. Do I? I have to shower. I went in the water. He really has that as his license plate. Oh, that's so cringe, man. All the time I see myself evolve into something else. I mean, when I first came to Miami, that pick in all white, just like, uh, stepping out the phantom. But what is this now? All the shades with the Dior fit, with the slides, with the Richie with the convict plate. I can't even watch, this is so cringy. Look, step back guys, step way back. Let's have a serious talk for a moment. If you really think that life is the things that you own and not the people that you affect or the life that you live, there's some big issues, okay? So let's just step way back. Is Wes Watson happy with his life? I don't know, he could be. He doesn't seem like it because he's angry in every single video and he talks about how awful people are in his life in every single video and he can, continually demeans other people whilst trying to live his life. That doesn't sound like a happy person to me because usually happy people, speaking from talking to Tibetan monks in Thailand and various things, they don't even really realize what's going on around them. They're just smiling and embracing the life that they do have and the fortunate one that they're getting to spend as well as try to provide as much for the people around them without any concern for themselves. Like literally just give until giving is not no longer an option. Anyways, is life a matter of just buying material things Things that will slowly degrade over time quicker than you will experience your life is life having the biggest house is it having the nicest car is it being the most jacked is it being the most muscular no it's not no like the the small fraction of people that actually care about that shit are incels and don't really care to expand their life's horizons let me tell you this if you want to know what life is if you are confused about the interpretation of your life's worth and you need to understand more intricately how to live your life in the best capacity for you to find meaningfulness go try travel the world. I, I know it's hard for people to do, but the most, and this sounds so counterintuitive, you guys, from every advice that you've ever heard, but take six months, right? If you're working a shit job, just quit your job. Go pull a loan out. And I know it sounds crazy, but just hear me out. Go pull a loan out. Go travel the world for six months. And I'm not talking like the tourist vacations, like Cancun or Costa Rica or anything. I'm talking like real places, like go to Thailand, right? And actually go to like the rural areas of Thailand and see how people are living. Talk to them, get aware of what they're doing. Go to Europe right go to war-torn countries like bosnia like serbia and watch how you can just walk around in the modern era and there's a gucci store but next to it there's also an apartment that has been bombed and has still standed because no one's taken it down go to south africa where the murder rate is about 88 people per day okay per day go to north africa egypt and and go walk around these places go to Djibouti, africa where you know i've been in, and see what people live like talk to them and you'll see something very quickly is that people from all over the world, whether they're in a war-torn country, an impoverished country, or a relatively well-off country, but not as well-off as maybe the Western world, are very happy. They're content. Most of them don't even have phones. Most of them don't even have TVs. They just go outside for their entertainment and hang out with their friends. They go sip tea. I mean, in Bosnia, one of the coolest things to experience was people work. They work maybe a six-hour shift. They get off work. They don't even have a car, but they just all live so close together. They develop their own little communities, and they all go sip and have a coffee together. They have an espresso with a cigarette and just sit down, watch the sun rise, watch the sun set. And that is their day. And it is one of the most charitable and beautiful things, wholesome, the most wholesome things you can ever see. A cafe fills up by 5 p.m. in the day with all these friends, old and young, sitting together talking about life, talking about their family, talking about things that they enjoy. It is like, honestly, well, one of the most precious moments you'll ever experience. And this is life. Like it is the selflessness of others and sharing an experience collectively.
collectively that is life. It is not buying things in an isolated box that Wes Swanson is in and having all these material items and then talking shit from the inside of that box to the outside of everyone else, thinking that you're the right one, when it very well could be that he is the wrong one in the situation. He is the delusional one. And in fact, everyone that is outside of his box are the right ones. They're the ones that are happy. They're the ones that are having a, a full and fulfilled life. That could really be the situation. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I really don't believe that. And if we just take a look at the people who buy his programs and, and actually pay him money, oftentimes they're just not happy because they don't have a passion in life. They don't have a meaning in life. And so it's the dad figure on Instagram that talks to them like shit, like a father saying, you need to get your shit together, that they're going to pay because they think that he will be able to provide them a passion. He'll be able to provide them the way to get to that point of content being right. And that's at the end of the day, what we're all chasing. And in the Western society, it gets to a point where people often think that that direction is just meaningly getting more capital. And it just, again, please, like I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart, travel the world, like don't travel to Paris or stupid shit like this, like travel the world and just go see how other people live. And you'll soon realize like that Westernized bubble that you've been in when it pops, it's like, oh, none of this actually matters. Like this lifestyle is all fabricated and it's all just a part of a big system in which you put money in, you take money out and you keep doing that your whole life. And it's all just meant to make the world of that Western capitalism go round. But when you step outside of it, holy shit, you realize that there's so much more to life, so much more value to life. So don't get caught up in that bubble. That's basically what the, the moral of this is. Uh, Wes Watson is an idiot. He's delusional. He's confrontational. I don't think he's happy. I don't think he's content. I don't think he's fulfilled in life. Uh, and if he makes a video on me, that's great. But just know that I don't have empty bones in my body. I've served eight years in the military, not as an ex-con and make that my entire character. I've made my own money from an established point of being in a group home, from not having a mother or father to coming up and actually doing this myself. And I can tell you the reality of the situation, not just this fabricated artificial view of the situation. Anyways, that's the rant done for today. If you guys like this video, subscribe or leave a comment telling me I'm an ass at for doing this or really whatever. I doubt anyone's going to even make it this far. So hopefully the real ones are going to see that rants versus the non real ones and you can make the most out of it some way, some shape or form. If you go bankrupt because I told you to take out a loan, don't blame me, but I do think that's the best way to live life. There's a great book, okay? Really great book. Two great books, actually. I'll, I'll say this. There's a book called 4,000 Weeks, and there's a which is the average lifespan of a human being, and there's a book called Dive with Zero. If you read those books, you'll understand my interpretation of all this, but basically, you are going to have a goal of dying with zero dollars in your bank account, and you might ask, that's dumb. I want to have a retirement. I want to have, you know, my kids be wealthy. Let me propose an alternative thing to you. You are going to get old and be unable to do anything with your body. And so you might as well spend the majority of your money while you're young and able to do things with your body, right? More so than that, if you have children, you should spend money while those children are around and they're able to experience life with you. The biggest flaw in, I think, most people's design of their economic situation with kids is that they wait until they're dead or too old to do anything with their kids to give them their money. Instead, what I would rather do as a parent is even if it's biting the bullet and like I have to pull out a loan to do it, take that kid around the world with me. He can experience life with me and in turn, I get to experience life with him or her. That is such a precious thing that that kid will remember for the rest of their life that will give them experiences and build their character for the rest of their life as opposed to just giving them money after you've died. And it's like, okay, great, I have all this money. But by that time, they're 35, 40 years old. They're entrenched in a full-time job that they can't step away from and they have their own kids. What's that money going to really do at the end of the day to provide someone happiness or gain them an experience which they could have never had before? Not much. So needless to say, uh, yeah, it might be dumb to sound like saying taking out a loan is a bad, it's, it seems like a bad idea, but at the end of it all, it's going to garner you experiences, which are wealthier than any amount of dollars that you could ever have. So anyways, have a good day.